Hi there. Now the 10th row of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts is a toughie. Okay, this is going to be one of the top tier workouts because what we're going to do is we're going to start off at a nice two minutes, nice, slow, gentle, do, 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 do. But then we're going to go one minute sprint. Okay, I want you to give everything for that one minute and then use the next two minutes to recover. Okay, now that's going to probably be quite a slow paddle pace rather than anything like 2k plus 20 or whatever. But I just want to make sure that you recover throughout those two minutes, but carry on moving. And then you hit that one minute hard again, and then you recover, and then you hit it hard again. So you're going to go through this 10 times in total, and it should really take you up there as a top tier workout. So what I want to say is when it comes to the warm up, let's get through this warm up. But if you're not warm enough by the time you start the main workout, pause the video and then carry on warming up. And when you're ready, that's when you start the, the workout. Okay, cool. Right. So that four minute warm up of which I speak, let's get into that. Now we have to set up our machine as always. So on the concept two, head right to the drag factor, set that to where you want it to be. If you don't know where to set it, set it between four and five because too low isn't the issue. Too high is the issue. Next up, if you can't oh, wait, sorry, if you're not in a concept to you're on something else just set the resistance so you get a nice feel from the stroke but it's not too heavy okay next up now we get there set the monitor to eye height so you don't have to look up you don't have to look down and finally if you can adjust the foot plate height get it to a point where you're able to come to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically no further please if you are uh, set too high it can get a little bit tough to get there if you're set too low it can be easy to go past that vertical position you just cause power leaks and things if you do that so we're going to do this around about 20 strokes a minute and I just want you to think about a wee push of your feet um, enough as though you're standing up okay because all I want you to think about is the timing between pushing with your feet and your handle connecting to the machine all right here we go then in three two one let's go so this should really be a gentle push just push enough basically to get the machine moving so that you can just think about when you push and when your hands connect to the machine and hopefully you get what I mean by connect it's like that point when you feel the handle snap into whatever it is that your machine uses and you want to get that push and the hands at the same time and to help that along you make sure to have straight arms as you come forwards and a forwards tilt towards the front of the machine and that helps with that connection and it also helps if you hold that forward tilt and straight arms, it helps get that power into the machine. If you pull too soon or swing your back too soon, you can lose power. And we don't want that. So if you have that connection timing, kind of run about where you want it to be, you can start to increase the push of your legs. Okay, so push a little bit harder and take the intensity up to what it would feel like if you were walking up 10 flights of stairs. Okay, so your heart rate goes up, your breathing rate goes up, but you're not working so hard that you think you can't continue. Now, usually when I get to two minutes to go, I do like single leg workout, arms only and whatever. If you want to carry on rowing through the next two minutes to make sure you're nicely warmed up for today's workout, then I advise doing that rather than the drill work. Otherwise, in two strokes time, let's put one foot on the ground. Okay, so one foot on the ground, continue rowing. And this just makes it easier to get into those body positions. So having one leg strapped in makes it easier to roll forwards with that shin vertical, straight arms, and that forwards tilt towards the front of the machine. Last one here, let's swap legs. Ah, can't get out, I'm stuck. <laughs> These Nike zooms have like a pointy heel to them and it kind of quite often gets trapped in the heel cup. So yeah, so just carry on with this one leg in. Don't affect, don't change your stroke too much just because you've got one leg in. Should be pretty much the same. One more here and we're going to put both feet back in. Tighten your straps and get your legs straight. 
and roll with your back and arms. So take up the initial tension by swinging from a forwards to a backwards lean. And as you start that swing, pull in your arms. But it's important that you take the initial tension with that swing of the back first. And then you go, hands out, rock over the body. So get those hands away first before rocking. Hey, let's rock. So let's roll to the front of the machine, straight arms and a forwards tilt, and just press out from the front. Not too hard, because I want you just to continue to work on the timing of your foot press and your hands continuing, sorry, connecting, wrong words, <laughs> connecting to the machine. And also holding that forwards tilt and straight arms as you push, okay? Hold. Okay, you shouldn't be recalling, recoiling at all. Oh, bad day for words. You can recall as much as you want. It's the recoiling I don't like. <laughs> so, I'm going to do what I've been doing in most of the rows so far. I'm going to replay the video I took of this back in 2021. But I will see you in run about 30 minutes time for the cool down and some stretching. Okay, right, so remember this first two minutes we're going nice and gentle. You might want to put this up at around about 2k plus 20 for this first two minutes or even a little bit faster to ease you into the first minute sprint. But then it's up to you how you treat the two minutes for the rest of the workout. All right. Okay, let's get ready to go in three, two, one. Nice and gentle start. So I'm just going to do this run about 18 strokes a minute and 2K plus 20 pace. I'm going to continue to make sure that the power is coming from a strong leg drive, okay? And I'm really going to think about my body position because I want to make sure as I start the sprint in a minute and a half's time that I'm nice and fluid and loose. I don't want to be tight. I don't want to be not fully kind of ready for it because it does take a lot out of you when you go hard for a minute. So you need to really think about making sure that you're ready to Get that power through your body and into the machine efficiently and safely. Which is why you have that forward tilt over your hips and arms nice and straight as you start the drive. Because that gets the power in without the muscles in your back or arms fighting against it. And remember we go fast by putting more power from the legs, but also a higher stroke rate. So let's see if we can try and get round about 2K pace for this today. Okay. Three strokes to go. You ready for this? Two, one more, one, here we go. Let's go sprinting. This really is about trying to go fast. Just see what your body wants to put into the machine. Let yourself fly for this first one. I've certainly started to fade, but get that power out from your legs into the machine. 10 seconds to go. Three, two, one. Now I'm just gonna rock up and down like this. I'm gonna allow myself to recover. That was a rather intense start to the day, wasn't it? 
So yeah, so I'm just rocking back and forwards. Flywheels continuing to move because I'm still connecting lightly, but my pace is like <laughs> six minutes per 500 meters. I think I could walk it faster than that. Right. So, you see what happens then? So, a really fast, short, sharp sprint. I was flying along it down at like 2K minus eight to start there. But then by the end of it, I was, I'd slowed right down to like 2K minus three. Right, I am feeling, just because of how hard my glutes were just working then by pushing hard, feeling a little bit of discomfort. And that's because my sit bones have been just pressing down on that part of my glutes uh, for the past like almost five minutes. And then through that power, so I've just kind of reseated my seat. It's the best way that I, I say it. Right, and I'm gonna just start easing myself back into this. Got 20 seconds to go until the next interval. Okay, 10 seconds to go. I got my mass right here. Okay, let's go sprinting. Now, definitely already feels a lot more of a different workout than last week. I'm able to really snap into these sprint sessions. Keep on pushing with those legs. Almost there. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, be interesting to come back and see what my technique's like there. Sometimes in the search of speed, my technique tends to fall apart. Maybe for the next form check Friday, I should come back and look at this one to see how much I crumble when I try to sprint. Now for anyone interested, it's November 2021 right now, and this month's cross team challenge event uh, at c2ctc.com is a one minute challenge. So if you're getting on quite nicely here, then you might want to try and join the team if you haven't already, and then see how you get on in a one minute effort. My pace is all over the place. It suddenly thinks I'm doing 135 because I'm rocking backwards and forwards. <sighs> Strange. Something wrong with the monitor there. Okay, we've got 30 seconds to go until the next one. <sighs> Make sure and get yourself comfortable. Then with 20 seconds to go, I'm gonna start some light rowing just to make sure my body's eased into it. Muscles do feel a little bit used after these one minute sprints, so 20 seconds of light rowing will flush them out. Okay. Two. One. Let's go sprinting. I'm gonna try and think a bit better about my technique this time with a view to doing a comparison between the last interval and this one to see if anything changes. 
by really thinking about a good posture and getting the handle away from me after I finish the stroke. Okay, almost there. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah. Whew. Was that only the third one? Blimey. But still, a nice, where are we? 141, I averaged on that one, so it's four seconds faster than my 2K pace still. So, so far, I'm definitely averaging a lot faster for the sprints than I was last time round. So that's good. Hopefully you are too. Whether you're taking the full two minutes like rest like I am, just moving backwards and forwards. Actually, I need to be careful the way I was just kind of rocking like this. I was doing that thing that I always say not to do about rolling my hips back. So just like doing this and rolling my hips backwards and forwards, I'm doing exactly what I say about how the sit bones just end up grinding over your glutes. So I don't think I had anything to do with pressure or effort. It was all to do with me just rocking backwards and forwards. So sometimes just leaning forwards, I'm making sure your weight's right on the edge of the machine, leaning forwards just means that my, my glutes are kind of a little bit freer, getting a little bit of a rest. Okay, 20 seconds to go. I'll get ready into the next one in 10 seconds time. Two, last stroke. Here we go. Right, this time I really want to focus on pushing out hard with the legs. Even if I'm sacrificing stroke rate, I want power from my legs. Really think about them as the main power source and everything else follows off the back of it. Okay, five, I know, where am I? I'm a second out, three, two, one. Whoa. Kind of lost my timing towards the end, but I dropped two strokes per minute in terms of stroke rate. So I was only doing 30 that time, rather than 32 the time before. Yet, because I was focusing on power from my legs, I was only 0.7 of a second slower compared to when I was rowing at 32 strokes a minute before. So that's quite, I mean, Yes, I'm still slower, but two strokes a minute to only lose 0.7 of a second pace. It's not bad. Uh, I do feel like I'm overreaching into the front in the search of that extra power. So this time round, I really want to concentrate on coming forwards and not over leaning. So finish, handle away, hit that position and then just hold until I stretch. I don't, I've got a habit of kind of dipping forwards, thinking that that's gonna make a difference. 
there's actually a leak power doing that. So if I can just come forward in this position, just keep between that 11 and one o'clock tilt. See what happens power-wise this time. Okay, 20 seconds to go. Just start your increase in rowing. And we have 10 seconds to go. Last one. Let's go sprinting. Right. Set. Set. So I'm really trying not to over lean at the front. It almost feels like I'm upright, but I know I'm not. It's really easy to just let things just break a little bit because the stroke rate's up. This is why we practice. Oh, make a couple of bad habit strokes there. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh. We're halfway there at the Bon Jovi point. Drink. Oh. And I know it's not all about me, but it is a good indicator of how shifting focus on technique helps that I was back up stroke rate just then to 32 again, but I was a whole two seconds faster. And I think that was to do with the stroke rate going up. That was taken care, as we know, by about at least 0.7 of a second. But that extra one second, or 1.3, will have come because I was in the right position coming out rather than coming in dipping, which causes a power leak for me anyway. When I dip, my butt scoots. I'm not saying that my butt doesn't scoot when I'm set in a better position, but certainly if I have that dip at the front, it's like it sends my seat out from underneath me. I know I'm not being super hot on technique today, but that ship kind of sails when you're doing, <laughs> doing one minute uh, sprints. So hopefully what I am talking about is enough for you to think about it for yourself. Just keep those arms straight and the forward lean as you drive. In three, two, one. Let's go sprinting. Don't dip, come on. Stay. Good posture. Front and back. Nice and powerful. Let that power from your legs go through your arms. Don't try not to pull early because that will fight that power. Twenty seconds to go. Here we go, 10 seconds, three, two, one. Doing a good job all round, I think, if we're still hitting happy paces. That was 
so faster still, which, what was that, the seventh one? I've lost count. I'm happy that I'm still hitting 2K minus five, even at this stage. Whew. Definitely, this shows to me the reason why if you're doing proper sprint sessions, this is why you stop or at least do paddle rowing rather than light rowing in between those sprint intervals. That the point is, you want to be able to put everything into the sprint interval that you have, okay? You want your bowl of power to be available wherever it is for this one minute sprint coming up. Whereas if you're doing light rowing in between these two minutes, you're still using that energy and it's not getting a chance to fill back up at all because you're carrying on using it. And I think, well, it's very anecdotal because there's only one session to compare, but I think this really does show how for me anyway, full on rests gives me better performance. Right, in three, two, one. Let's go sprinting. I want to really think about that forward lean and holding it. It's actually a good sign that I just took off from my seat because it showed I was in the right lean position, if nothing else. So I'm just, all I'm doing is grunting it, you know? I'm just determined to go faster. Okay, five. Four, three, two, one. Yeah, I'll take 0.6 of a second as faster. And the good thing about doing it this way with real uh, rest counter splits up there is that if you're interested, you can see my heart rate descending over time. I don't know what I hit at the end of that one, to be honest, but you can see it dropping down. And that's one of the, it's kind of the way I use heart rate. I don't really train in heart rate zones. I just train to intensity, hence the bottom, mid, top tier intensity pyramid. But I do have, I do keep an eye on what my heart rate recovery is like, because that's a good indicator of the fatigue as you go through the workout. So we'll see where I get down to come 20 seconds to go on this one and compare it to the next one. So where am I? Three, two. So 83 beats per minute as we crossed 20 seconds to go. But three more to go. And we have two more strokes to go until our next sprint. One more. You ready? Let's go sprinting. Just keep that power flooding in. Remember, your arms come in and out at the same pace, in and out. Handle away. 
triggers that forward lean. And all you have to do is bend your knees to return. And that will keep your stroke rate up there. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, 153 heart rate. Same pace as before. Oh. Two more to go. It's definitely intensity wise up there. But what's good is that because this is a high intensity, but not many of them, although your bowl of energy that you have will drain from today you'll find it should refill most of the way to the top before your next session. And for the 30 days of 30 minutes anyway, the next session is back to a bottom tier, which it really should be after a top max intensity row anyway. Next day you wanna have that nice regenerative bottom tier lower intensity and then that will then help you fill up your bowl of power again ready for the tough session if it comes the day after Whew. all right 30 seconds to go my heart rate's up at 97 so it doesn't look like it's going to recover quite as well as it did last time but close to it 94 93 10 off i was 83 last time so okay Five strokes, four, three, two, one. Let's go sprinting. Try and think about your hands connecting with the handle, fingers like hooks. So have a straight line down your arms, through your wrists and your hand to your knuckles as your fingers hook rather than choke the handle. Thumbs underneath to let that power Surge. Five, four, three, two, one. Ooh. Slightly higher. Heart rate finish. Two more minutes easy or recovery and then one last sprint finish and let's see how fast we can get that i quite surprisingly that's my fastest one yet 138.3 makes you wonder whether really focusing on that hang my fingers hooked over the handle, or like a zombie. Or whether that really does make a difference between just even that straight and maybe a slight flick back of the wrist, if you're slightly further around the handle, maybe your forearms or something are taking up the power. But then really thinking about a straight line through my wrists and my hands, top of my hands into my knuckles. Was that what made me go faster? Uh, 
maybe. <laughs> I was doing one, I was up at 33 that time, so maybe it was just stroke rate, who knows. 30 seconds to go. My heart rate's down to 92 already. 91, 90, 89, and we're off for this 20 seconds. So 89, better recovery than the interval before, weirdly. So it shows I've got it in me to go hard in two strokes time for our last sprint coming up after this one. You ready? Let's go sprinting for the final time in this session. Let's see if I can put it all together. So hands hooked over the handle. Trying not to over lean. And really try to hold that forward tilt as I explode my feet into the machine, pushing it away from me. Five, four, three, two, one. Ah. 137 average pace by the end. That'll do. Oh, well, that was fun. <laughs> oh, it's just so tough. Uh, yeah, but hopefully you put in the amount of work that uh, you needed to, to <laughs> I can't even speak, across uh, each of those one minute sprints. Um, right, make sure I have a drink, gather your thoughts and whatever. Hopefully I've left enough space between the end of the row and now to then get into a cool down. So we're gonna do a two minute cool down as always. Uh, pick whatever pace you need to that you can kind of glide into that kind of cooler state, okay? So if it's 20 strokes per minute, 2K plus 18 and then slow, then by all means do. If it's slower than that, by all means do. Okay, in three, two, one, let's go. Oh, <laughs> worthwhile rewinding the video there and seeing just how long it took for me to take that opening stroke. Oh. It's my lats that feel it after that. I was obviously squeezing in a little hard, trying to get as much pace as I could out towards the end of the row. But like I say, use this two minutes to cool down. I'm trying to really sell the purpose, the value, the reason to always factor in a warm-up at the end of your row. I mean, if you're in a gym and there's a queue of people waiting for you to get in the rowing machine, it's up to you whether you want to be bullish and just take this extra two minutes on the machine or whether you just go and find a treadmill or even actually, as much as I detest them as a primary exercise machine, this is probably when a cross trainer probably comes into its own because it moves for you. So you just have to kind of get on and make it move. But ideally, of course, you want to be on a rowing machine so that you can just reset your technique, reset your memory of what rowing is like because your subconscious will remember the difference between this gentle, good technique and not that intense, or if you just stopped at the end of the main session and that's like how your brain remembers, your subconscious remembers how rowing feels. <laughs> right, so gonna end to the stretching section next. If you don't have time, please at least stretch your quads and your hamstrings, but not in the shower, because I don't want you to slip and fall over, but take time, stretch those quads and hamstrings at one point. Or you can join Stretchy John, he'll take you through some structured uh, stretching, funnily enough. Or you can join me on the rower for 
if you really want to hog <laughs> the time on your machine, if you've got nowhere to stretch, I mean. So get your legs back in the straps, make sure they're loose so you can put your toes up against them slightly, legs straight, hands in the air, and fold your chest down towards your legs. Don't worry, I mean, you can see how I'm miles away from my legs, but even here, the stretch I'm getting down here in my hamstrings is quite considerable. But then that's because I've got really tight hamstrings. Um, this is, I'm just trying to ease them off day by day, but they're just, whether it's that I stand up when I'm working, I can't think how that would, how that would tighten my hamstrings though, but I just do have very, very tight hamstrings, so. Uh, but this stretching session at the end of all the rows has really got me somewhere towards it helping. Let's move on to glutes next, put one leg up on the monorail, 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 monorail. Put your other foot over your knee so that the, uh, your ankle is in the crook of your knee. Bring your up knee, your up knee, uh, across your body so that you have a straight line between your face, your knee and your foot. Hold it in place with one arm, hold onto the machine at the back if you wish for stability and just twist your torso round and kind of down-ish. And that should help oh, um, stretch that glute. Oh, crikey, they're tight again. Again, it's part of this. I think the glutes thing's part of the high rocks training, the session I did yesterday, oh man. Uh, yeah, it was all sled pulls. It was, what was it, ski erg, sled pull, farmer's carries, hand release push-ups, swap legs. Um, and there was another one. Oh, shoulder presses as well. Ah, swap legs, oof. And it's, to be honest, it's, maybe this is where, when I said about how it's my lats that were hurting on that first stroke. It's my lats that seem to be hurting today from, I don't know whether it was all the ski erg, but it was only like, what was it? 2,500 meters in the ski erg. Can't see how that would be it. So it must be the sled pull that's really, yeah. But to be honest, uh, this is why I'm loving doing this high rocks training is that I've not felt this sore in quite a long time. Let's move up to quads next. I'll try and talk while I'm taking you through the stretching. So it's not just me talking about stretches. So one finger on the monitor for stability if you wish. Flick the f your foot up behind you so that your heel touches your backside. And then add a little bit of a pull just to stretch your quad. But yeah, I think uh, I've kind of been in that kind of nice comfort zone rowing where I've kind of just been powering along at the same pace and not really like training constantly to a kind of a, a real intense point. I'll do intense sessions, but I wouldn't do loads of them together in order to actually in increase just because of injury and things. Um, swap legs, same thing again. Um, whereas, because high rocks is different and the, strangely, the, the muscles that are injured from rowing like that one up on my collarbone, doesn't get hit for it when I'm doing high rocks, apart from the row, obviously. Um, so it means that I'm able to take myself into that proper pain cave when doing it. And it's just lovely. Waking up this morning with my body just sore from all the effort I put in yesterday. Felt amazing. <laughs> it's a strange sport. Strange mindset really, isn't it? That to work hard enough to be in quite a lot of pain the next day is a good thing. <sighs> but yeah. And what I'm hoping is that this will then translate back to the rowing again, you see. Right, so let's do hip flexors. So put one knee on the ground, your foot's behind it up on its toes, the other foot is in front of you, your knee is over the top of it and you've got 90 degree angles in both legs. And then for the knee that is on the ground, take that hip and push it forwards, okay? So ooh, keep a, a good, good posture, but just push that hip forward. So what you're doing is you're then closing off the angle of your front knee and opening up the angle of your back leg, okay? And that should then give you a really nice stretch right up on your hip flex. So that kind of, yeah, that meaty bit that runs just down off the top of your hip. Uh, <laughs> mm, tasty. <laughs> right, swap legs. Same thing again, and then just push that hip forwards. Now again, I, I know I'm skipping out, I haven't showing how to do this without your knee touching the ground. But uh, again, I'm playing the... Um, I'm a wee bit sore card after yesterday's high rocks training. So, um, yeah, so that's why I'm uh, doing it this way so I can make sure and have a proper stretch because I feel like if I do the knee off the ground, well, sorry, I completely lost what I was saying. If I do the knee off the ground, well, I don't get quite as good a stretch as if I was knee on the ground. So, and I don't want to shortchange it. I'll try and remember and do it the next time I'm fully fit. <laughs> Let's do forearms next. So put your hands in front of your face together, push them together, and then push them down 
and still together in front of your chest, okay? So you should have a nice right angles between your forearms and your fingers. And this should give you a nice stretch right underneath your forearms and your fingers should get a nice wee stretch too as you're kind of pushing against the two of them. So it's a two for one. Um, yeah, and it means you can sit here and people, if you chant as well, om nam shibai, om nam shibai, om nam shibai. There's a film reference, there we go. If you get what the film reference was, then that's the hashtag for this row. <laughs> Actually, that's one of the hashtags. I'll do a different hashtag at one point as well. Um, because, yeah, I keep forgetting to do them. Right, shoulders. Uh, put your hand out in front of you and then bring it across your body. Hold it in place with your other arm. Oh, mama. And give a good little stretch. Yeah, this, this must be from the slide pulls in if my shoulders are that sore. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think what the... Because someone got, got in touch uh, yesterday and said, remember and do the... can't remember who it was, so apologies. Was it Stefan? I can't remember, sorry. Um, yeah, and said, remember the hashtags? It doesn't feel like the, the video's completed if you don't do a hashtag, so I need to try and remember to do that. So I've now got a little sign underneath the camera that says hashtag. <laughs> it's very high tech in here. Just swap arms. So I've got to think what the hashtag would be. Um, what have I really talked about? I mean, uh, I, mean I, was, I was just talking about comfort zone, but... I want to say, or I could do hashtag no comfort zone. There we go. Will that be all right? I could stick that on the t-shirt, couldn't I? Hashtag no comfort zone. Highway to no comfort zone. It's not quite a good song, is it? It's a wonder I'm a drummer, isn't it? Rather than a singer. With a voice like that, you think I should be the singer of the band, eh? Eh? <laughs> oh dear. Right. Uh, biceps next, I think. Yeah. Hands behind you. So you're a ski jumper. Rotate those thumbs outwards. Woo. Um, and that stretches the long head of your bicep. Yeah, I'm, yes, I, uh, uh, when, I'm um, sorry, I have to try to work out to say this. Uh, years ago when I was in the same band the first time around, um, I used to, they used to give me a microphone to sing backing vocals and things on it while I was playing the drums. And <laughs> I said to them this time around, I said, just don't give me a microphone because I'd sit there and just be talking away and answering the singer back when he was talking to me. I was just an idiot. So I said to him, just don't give me a microphone. Uh, what we'll do next, triceps. Ugh. But then with my, I think with my um, danger zone or comfort zone song, between that and the butt butt song that I once did, but 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 but, I should really be a singer. Really should, shouldn't I? <laughs> Delusions of adequacy. No, uh, I. Yeah. Do I think what? What's my? There's. I, I don't know if I've ever told this song this story before, but I was once doing karaoke um, with my wife, and uh, we were singing Tenacious D tribute. Um, this is just a tribute. Um, and the two of us were giving, uh, the, the phrase, I must have said this, this rings a bell saying this. The two of us were geeing at loudy, as they say in Glasgow. I'm sure I've used that phrase before. Uh, yeah, geeing at loudy means giving it gusto, giving it some. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> when I was done singing it with my wife, the girl who was running the, the karaoke thing, um, actually uh, um, came up to me and she was like, oh, okay. and she was, I don't want to use the phrase coming on to me, but she was coming on to me. And Julie's standing there going, what? And it's because I'm such a good singer. Or it could be that I'm completely delusional and actually she was saying to me, get out, you're rubbish. <laughs> anyway, there you go. That's the end of the stretch. That's the end of a story. But yeah, if only somebody had videoed me singing tribute, hey. <sighs> Poor Jack Black would be, maybe that should be the, the all the, the myriad hashtags today. You could do tribute, you could do Jack Black, could do no comfort zone, could do whatever the um num jubai, um num jubai film reference was. I'm gonna leave that one for you to try and work out. Hopefully you'll know. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's us done. See again, that's the endorphins, <laughs> the dopamine up in my head from the excitement of today's really tough row. So this is the kind of, this is how you should feel. You should feel good. Even though you're tired, you should feel a little bit hyper and good after a workout because you've put in lots and lots of effort and you've come out the other end and you're like, hey man, that was good, that was a great, that was a, yeah, a great session, I hope. So let me know if you agree that that was a great session or not. Uh, and I hope you're enjoying these. Remember, although this is day 11 of the 30 uh, days of 30 minute workouts, 
If this is the first one you've done, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to do the 10 that has preceded it. You don't even have to do the rest that are going to come as long as you did some of them and as long as you enjoyed it, that's really all that matters. But if you do do all 30 um, workouts, remember to get in touch with me at the end of them and I will send you a certificate. Ooh, <laughs> um, a little PDF basically with your name on it saying, ooh, you did it. So anyway, right. So thank you very much for joining me for this one. I will hopefully see you in one of my other workouts. Make sure and tell your friends. It's the only way I'm ever going to grow is if you tell your friends. So I will see you in another video. Until then, take care, be well, bye-bye.